I can remember how excited I was when I saw that the muzzle loader project had come in the mail. Really, what I got into trying to become a gunsmith, doing custom stocks, was what I wanted to do, especially in black powder type rifles. <clears throat> Reading through the description of the steps in the lab text, it really gave me a false sense of confidence thinking that this was going to be an easy task. And then even opening the box when I first got it, looking at it, it looked like it was already pretty much complete. So I thought that it was just going to be an easy project that wasn't going to take very long. Then I started trying to inlet the first section, which is the side, the cap lock. That's when I first made the mistake and took a little bit too much wood, probably because I wasn't going with the grain like I should have been. After that, I realized that this was going to be something that was going to take a lot of patience and that I really shouldn't rush. But because of that, I'd also really messed up my timetable on completing this, so it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. The inletting, I had a lot of problems with throughout the whole project. The trigger, the trigger guard, the, the side lock, the toe plate, the butt plate. It ended up being very difficult and I had, there are some repairs that I'm going to have to make in the near future on it if I want it to look completely right. But it, I also had to take into account that this is my first project ever doing something like this, so mistakes were kind of an inevitable thing. Um, the inletting, it taught me a, a very valuable lesson in taking my time. Um, even though it seemed like there was not much that needed to come off, there was still quite a bit of patience that was needed because it's really easy to take too much when you're not trying to. So that my problems with the inletting didn't really stop there. When I got to the metal work, working with the brass, uh, the joint of the toe plate and the butt plate, I also had a little bit of a problem with the filing down and getting it even. I'll, and the pictures will hopefully show some of the issues that I had. Uh, again, it's something that I understand I'm going to have to try and correct in the future. Then, I also took the inletting out of sequence in, from what the text described. I started out with the side lock and then I went on to straight into the trigger guard, the trigger and the trigger guard, thinking that I was on a roll because I got the, slide, the side lock done. Then I really looked over the book again and realized I needed to go back to the, the butt stock and inlet for the butt plate and the toe plate. So I stopped what I was doing at that point, went back and then followed the book and did everything in, in order of the sequence that was listed there. Finished, the, got the butt stock, the butt plate on there pretty good. It's still rough. You, you can definitely see that there's a little bit of gaps going on in some areas of it. What I really had problem was with was getting the toe plate on there straight and even. Um, that, that's going to be something that I'm going to need to repair later on with this rifle. The thimbles, I had, I had a bit of a problem with the drilling on there, finding the right bit to get, to get it to where the screw would actually go in and actually seat itself into the brass through the, the stock. I ended up getting it to work. I probably drilled one or two extra holes in the process, but I was finally able to get it to work, got the thimble, the rear thimble to sit on there right. Once I got the rear thimble in there, it was pretty much downhill from there. The barrel tenons were actually really easy to do. Uh, it didn't take much uh, sanding on the, on the metal to get it to fit correctly, and I was actually pretty happy with that. When what really got me excited about this project was when I drilled the holes for the barrel tenons that it actually went right the first time and it looked pretty good. That kind of helped me boost my confidence up and really propelled me through the rest of the project. I did not do any of the brass polishing because like I said when, once I started looking getting down on myself with messing up on the inletting it really messed with the timetable on getting this rifle completely finished. So I moved on, got the tenons done, got the front thimble drilled in. That one was a lot easier because the, the brass part was already threaded. So it was just drilling the hole through the wood. So that, that one was pretty easy to do. 
Uh, the trigger assembly I got finished since I had started it out of order and started it earlier. I got it finished, got that sitting in there pretty close to right. There's probably a little bit more work that I can do, but it sits in the channel where it's supposed to and the trigger functions. The trigger guard, I went a little off from what was said to do. Um, it was saying that the inlighting should be done at the rear of the trigger guard. I did it more at the front. But I did that more because with the way that the book was saying to do it, my fingers didn't quite feel comfortable inside the trigger guard while on the trigger. So I moved it a little bit farther forward instead of back. But it works for me. It, it I think it looks great and well, I'm making the rifle for me. So they got that done. The trigger assembly went in really well. The trigger guard went in. It was really easy. That went in pretty well too. Um, a little sloppy on the inletting work, but I, I it was my problem. I need to slow down and I need, I need to really pay more closer attention to what I'm doing. Um, shaping the stock went fairly easy. I, I got it to where it's comfortable for me. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. And went with that. The nose cap I had a little bit of an issue with simply because trying to find a way to get the nose cap clamped on while having the rifle in a vise so that I can drill with a handheld power drill and it, it was just a pain all the way around. I ended up getting, I got the holes drilled fine. Um, I did lose one of the screws. I gotta find that. That's something that I'll have to look for later. But I do have one so it sits on there right and it, it can actually be installed. I didn't countersink the screw, mostly because I was a little bit worried about tearing up that brass piece right now. And when I have the tools that are a little bit easier for me to do it, then I'm gonna go ahead and get that problem fixed too. Sanding went really easy on the stock, and actually I'm really happy with how smooth it came out. It it looks pretty good. I did not do much shaping on the front of the stock simply because I. It was really close as it was, and I liked the way it looked as is, so I, I left it at that. Um, the The barrel sits in it really nice. It it doesn't look bad. I I like the way it looks. Um, the sanding the sanding went easy. Uh, like I said, I I love the way it feels. It's very very smooth. Um, I started off. I, I hit it with a one twenty grit sandpaper to help even it out and get all the extra bluing off of the stock from it getting all over the place on my hands and then smoothed it out completely with 220 and it, it feels really good um, the stain I used a gunstock stain that we had at the house it again I like the I love the color it turned out really well I'm gonna I completed it with a coat of linseed oil to help really protect the stain and uh, you'll see in the pictures. I, I, I think it turned out pretty well. I did not do a finish on the barrel simply because, one, I didn't have the time. Like I said, I really messed myself up with some of the mistakes that I was doing with the inletting and letting it get to me too much. Um, I didn't want to accept the mistakes, so it really got me down as far as my confidence. And then the farther I got on with the lessons of the class, the more I realized that everyone makes mistakes and it's really more about being able to fix them after you make them so once I got through that part of the, the class and it was a little bit easier my confidence got built up a little bit and I kind of figured out some of the areas where I can fix it so that that, that helped out a lot um, but I did not stain the barrel or uh, not stain I did not pol uh, finish the barrel um, I had finally ordered some of the plum brum from Brownells and it came in way too late but it will get finished here in the near future. I just want to be able to sit down and not mess that up. Um, but because the barrel isn't finished, the sights aren't installed on it either. But overall, the rifle has come together pretty nice, com considering the lack of experience that I have with it. Um, I actually had it, when I had it together, when I was looking at it, I was kind of happy with the way that it came out because it was my first time you have to look really close on some areas to notice that I made mistakes but overall it looks like it's a pretty good rifle now now I will say while it is it did come together kind of rough uh, all of the parts work the trigger assembly works the 
caulking piece works. It all works together. Um, I've done a couple dry fires with it without the nipple installed so that I wouldn't risk damaging that. And everything works fine. Uh, the set trigger works. The trigger releases the hammer. It, it does everything that it's supposed to. Now, I know that as far as procedures that can be used on modern guns, I know the inletting is a, a, a skill that can definitely be transferred over to modern guns. Um, especially when you're getting into like bedding rifle barrels and things like that. Um, inletting is... Being, being able to do take out material evenly so that when the rifle comes together everything fits the way it's supposed to that's that's a very important skill um, with the barrel tenons it's not much different that I noticed from doing um, because it goes into a dovetail slot it wouldn't be much different than apply, uh, than installing sights so that, that's another procedure that I, I, it's there's the general idea. I mean, obviously it's going to take some practice and some experience to be able to get everything correctly the first time. Well, not the first time to get everything done correctly. Now, one thing I was liking in the lessons in this class was the section on carving. I would love to eventually be able to do a uh, carving on the stock because this is because this is the first rifle that I've actually built it's something that I want to put up more of a show as a show kind of piece instead of something that I'm going to take out to the range all of the time so being able to work on practice the carving aspect and put a put a nice carving into the stock would be something that I would love to do on this rifle in the future um but overall this was a very this was a very important lesson for me as far as what it was going to go into gunsmithing. Um, I didn't take the time initially to s really look at the details of the project, and that is shown in the final results of the project. I did not have the patience uh, from the beginning, which again is shown in the final result of the project. It's taught me that you're going to make mistakes, the important thing is to be patient, take your time, make sure you're doing everything right so that when the mistakes happen, they're small and they're easier to fix. Um, but that that's probably the biggest lesson that I took from all of this was patience is important, attention to detail is key, and knowing that it's when you hit a mistake that you will be able to correct it at some point is important for confidence. Um, I really and enjoyed this project. It was a lot of fun. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned some habits that I'm going to need to fix to be successful in this industry. And this is why I like the hands-on projects that we have in this program. Um, I definitely need to work on my patience. And I, I thought my attention to detail was good, but this project showed me that it can be a lot better. So I, this the program was great. I love this project, and I can't wait to get to work on something else. Thank you.